Okay. Yes, I know. I'll disturb you again. Otherwise. Right. Um, where were we? Yes, we've got our uh, our, our pipeline uh, running green, and importantly, it was putting information into our repository. Uh, the weakness of this at the moment is that it gets this file system image, but it gets the latest one. And if I look at the resource type, the out, uh, it only gets by the file name. Uh, so a single file supplied in the base name source path will be published. Uh, in single file, fetch the latest artifact file validating the expected checksum. Uh, and you can see here, Artifactory does not support a file change history API. Uh, so if we want to keep the uh, history of the uh, file system images we provide, we've got to do one of two things. Either just before a new image is created, we need to archive the old image and then, uh, so you know, creating an archive version, or uh, we need to create every single file system image with a unique name. Uh, and that, each of those presents a bit of a problem for our pipeline. Uh, on the one hand, it's useful to be able to say, okay, I'm interested in this particular version so we can for example freeze a particular pipeline uh, on, a, yeah, on a particular uh, file system image so if there are problems later where you know we, we build a new version of uh, uh, Raspbian um, and we find that some downstream build fails we want to be able to go back to the old version that was working uh, and of course we, we will have done the artifactory file system image will be whatever the latest one is um, and that might present uh, an, an issue if however each one is named uniquely then we have the problem that in our pipeline we need to be able to identify the latest name uh, and that's not readily available now i think there is a way within concourse ci of parameterizing these things uh, in such a way that we can uh, feed the pipeline with an updated file name for example uh, and then we can treat the file name as one of the uh, as one of the input values. Uh, but right now, the way things stand, I, I can't be bothered to dig around in there. Um, I was going to poke around in Artifactory, but it's fairly clear just from this that Artifactory does not support file change history. So uh, we're on a non-starter there. Uh, so Artifactory is literally just a repository for things, uh, in this case just binary blobs. Um, and we would have to create some sort of naming scheme and then modify uh, our system so that it would pick up individual names uh, and, in, and, and create individual names. Uh, so uh, that's one issue. I mean, the, the other thing we could do thinking laterally is we could do a similar thing to the way the Raspbian loader handles this and that is we we could create a uh, uh, a web server front end to artifactory which would allow us to say you know get me the latest version of this artifact for example the pi patch uh, and have that do a 302 redirect to whatever the last build was so in that way, the downstream builds could all refer to the um, uh, redirected link, uh, unless we wanted to freeze up a specific thing, in which case you could go directly to Artifactory. So eh, there are a, a couple of possibilities um, of ways to deal with this. 
But at the moment, that's not really the focus of our attention. So the next thing we want to do is uh, start to expand our pipelines. So we're going to create a new, uh, another pipeline, which will take our raw image, introduce some scripts, use the SSH within the PyBuilder container we created to inject those scripts into the system and uh, uh, run them to do installations. So we'll start off really simple. Um, the first thing we want to do is make sure we've got everything we've done to date uh, filed away. Uh, so the first thing we want to do, I think, is make sure that this uh, pipeline is uh, stored away now that it's working uh, and this was already connected up to uh, a remote uh, so it's just pi pipeline uh, so if we uh, 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 you know, and we could just add another job to this pi pipeline but that's one step at a time uh, uh, so Best comments in the world, good enough for government work. Okay, so that's that safely away. Um, now we could either just leave that as it is, uh, or uh, and create another project uh, for our next pipeline. Mm, let's do that. Uh, uh, just before we do, uh, let's make sure that everything's put away. Yep, that's fine. Mm, that's fine too. Uh, Uh, trying to be clever and failing. Can I, can I just do? Uh, oh. <laughs> Come on, Mark. Yeah, uh, I, I knew that was right. Uh, I, I just got the wrong command. Uh, finger troll. Um, so the minus C just lets us change the, the Git directory we're inspecting uh, without actually moving anywhere, which is useful for this sort of thing where we're, uh, yeah, we want to check a number of directories. So instead of the CD into them each time, we just put the minus C on. It's kind of funky. Okay, so everything's under control. Uh, everything is currently working in our test system. Uh, we've got things coming from an external URI being version checked coming through. Uh, there's one thing I do want to do actually, uh, now that I'm th thinking about it. Uh, what this doesn't do at the moment is it doesn't poll uh, this, the, these two things. So the, the URI and the Git. Okay. Now, if we look at uh, if we look at git, uh, where is it? Uh, so we want the get steps. Uh, okay, and on the get steps, uh, we've got, let me see, trigger. Uh, so this says the new build of the job will be automatically created when the new version of inputs become available, which is fine. Uh, And uh, any version of this, as we say it again, yeah, well, we don't want that. Now, how do we set this to poll? Uh, 
uh, when a new version of this input becomes available. Uh, fine. Uh, version of the resource to fetch. Uh, How often? All right, so we know we can we know we can start out the task manually. So is it is it the pipeline we set to pull? Hmm. So how often does a how often does a job get run? Uh, get steps. Hmm. Right, so this is effectively what we do when we're just tagging it. Uh, is it the job which dictates? Uh, right, here we go, job. Uh, build logs, serial go maxing flight, public disabled, manual trigger. Ah, uh, right, here we go. Uh, Okay, so it's done in series. Log retentions, maximum in flight, fine. Uh, interruptible, failure on error on board. Okay. Is it the resource that determines it? Ah, here we go, check every. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so the default is one minute. And this is the interval which to check new versions of the resource. Cool. So it's actually the resource that determines it. Okay, so these are being checked once every minute. Uh, which seems a bit excessive for an external source, doesn't it? So what we're going to do, I think, uh, it's, it's okay for this, which is, um, even that's a bit frequent, isn't it? Uh, so if I do check uh, every And it's check every duration and uh, we want to check every uh, one a day. Uh, Uh, 
Duration. Uh, go time. Uh, one hour, five minutes. Yeah, okay. I assume one D for one day then. Duration swing is supposed to be signed sequence of decimal number, large and fractional and unique suffix such as. Uh, right, it looks like it's primarily for short distance, short times. But I'm going to assume that one day is okay. It doesn't. It's not very helpful. Uh, mm, yeah, we can go up to two hundred and ninety years. <laughs> I'm going to guess that. Uh, I mean, we we could set this every one one D. Uh, or but let's let's check every eight hours. There we go. There's no point in over checking um, for the pi image change. And these tools, uh, again, because it's an external thing, uh, we probably don't want to check it as often. Uh, let's check every. Every hour, uh, which even though it's under our control, uh, that's plenty for normal checking, uh, particularly with the Pi Builder scripts, because they're not going to change very frequently. Having said that, oh, uh, under normal circumstances, we would probably uh, trigger it manually anyway. So let's reset the pipeline. Uh, make sure everything's okay. Uh, come on, set the pipeline, and of course, uh, wait. He just to lock in again. And so yes. There we go. Now the fact that this has been ticking along in the background, presumably. Uh, and hasn't triggered a build. Uh, it's good because it means it hasn't it hasn't been triggered. Okay, so uh, right. So we'll just push that. Um, Okay, so we've just extended all the checks so that they won't run as frequently. Uh, so, uh, the next observation is that it's not really Pi Build anymore, is it? It's more like Pi Patch, but life's too short. Uh, we, 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 we could change the pipeline to change those names to make it a bit clearer, but um, let's move on. Uh, we want to take uh, that artifact that we've just created, and now instead of putting it into Artifactory, we're going to get it from Artifactory, and uh, we're going to uh, have some scripts somewhere that we're going to feed in that are going to be the build description and then we're going to load those inside the same container which is easy enough because that's exactly what 
concourse will do. Uh, and then we're going to use the uh, SSH and SCP within that container. Uh, if you remember, well, quite a few sessions ago, uh, we created a, a, a what was it? Uh, uh, this uh, uh, was it CI utils? No, it wasn't. Uh, it was the Pi Builder, wasn't it? Okay, so this uh, Pi Builder, uh, which we've been just using these uh, files from, uh, now we're going to use the uh, actual Docker file, I think. Uh, Okay, you can see this is the one that's based on the DockerPy VM, but we've added the DropBear SSH SCP, uh, which is what we need. Okay, and uh, and this will boot us into a virtual machine, uh, which is all ready. Uh, Uh, and this key that we've copied over here is our standard key uh, that we can then use in SCP and SSH in order to get into the virtual machine that we've just created with the patch file. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so. Uh, let's make a new directory and call it now just for the purposes of this demonstration which we do um, we will I don't know what should, what should we do with this one um, uh, let's install Well, let's install Docker onto our Raspberry Pi. I'll do for a test on it. Okay, so uh, I mean, we're probably probably not going to install just Docker. Uh, let's. Uh, oh, I right, know. Let's let's install. Let's install. Um, Um, I'm drawing a blank now on what exactly I want to install on these Raspberry Pis. Uh, I, want, I want something fairly simple. Uh, oh, let's just be let's just be really simple and just install things like Vim and Git and stuff like that on them. Although I've got a feeling they're already installed on Raspbian. Uh, okay. Uh, Oh, let's install Docker. Right, okay, so uh, let's call it um, um, PyBuild Docker. Uh, okay, uh, so let's do a git in it. And what this is going to be is the script which we're going to load in okay so let's call all those scripts uh, provisioner the um, under provisioners we will put uh, our script so let's call it uh, main and uh, let's Um. 
Okay. Uh, actually, the other thing we haven't done is remove that minus x. But uh, let's just leave it. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, so all we're going to do here is uh, now these shell scripts will be run uh, as uh, I, I guess is root, isn't it? Um, well, actually, no, they'll be run as pi because uh, we're going to log in as pi, which is the default account. Okay, so one of the things we'll need to do is we'll need to either uh, run the SSH with a sudo on this main, which will give the main script. Uh, all the sudo privileges or we have to uh, do all of that privilege escalation within the main so let's do sudo oops. let's do it in here so sudo and uh, you're not helping you know yes oh I don't want the belly rotten well, that cannot be comfortable <laughs> Crazy dog. Okay, uh, so at get install. Oops. Uh, okay, another precaution would be uh, now then. Do I want to run this all within a sudo? Hmm. Let's, let's just try it in a simple way. Okay, so if we want to install Docker on Raspberry Pi, which packages do we need? Uh, so, I'm uh, going okay. Docker. And oh, well, well, I suppose we should do that as well. Uh, now they're recommended. Uh, using this script. How old is this? Oh, come on, people who write these posts, please put dates on them. You're helping nobody by hiding shit. Because I've got no idea how recent this was. Come on, go away, if you're not going to be helpful. Here we go, June the 6th, 2020. Uh, Alright, so they're advocating using this script as well. Okay. Okay, so let's do as it says. Uh, let's do get uh, update and get upgrade. And curl should already be in place, so curl and do it silently, follow the link redirects. Now this is generally speaking it not a good idea, but given that these are sacrificial machines, uh, a good idea be damned. Uh, and then it says to do sudo and just add the uh, docker group to the pi account and we're basically good to go because uh, then the next thing is to do a reboot and see whether or not we're working so Let's 
take that as our baseline. Uh, okay, so we've got uh, I suppose we can put a readme in here. Uh, so this is my uh, provisioning to install Docker. Okay, it's really just for a proof of concept, so we should have those two scripts. Well, read me in one script, good. Is rather boring and misspelled. It doesn't matter. So going over to our, uh, I think we'll put this into the streams group, uh, and we'll create a new project called uh, what do we call it? Pi Pi B Docker Pi B Docker. Uh, okay, so this is a proof of concept script to install Docker. Uh, make it public, create the project, and then we can copy that. There we go. Good old. Right. So now uh, we should have that in our. Bingo. Now. This provisioners directory is going to be part of our pattern. Uh, because uh, we're now going to write the pipeline which we might as well put in here as well actually so let's say pipeline.yaml goes in here whoops uh, now this is not going to be particularly uh, and I keep working in this narrow directory, don't I? So uh, let's close this one. Uh, shall we close the whole thing? Mm. Okay, we don't really need that, do we? Oops. Okay, so we've got the exit. And your width or depth. Uh, let's go with depth. Right. Uh, okay. Um, we'll probably do that a bit more, can we? That's better. Right. Uh, so uh, let's. Uh, split that and get uh, the pipeline in here because it's as good a place as any as a starting point because although we don't need this first thing we do need this generic artifact resource so let's take that uh, oops. and definitely Uh, and I think we can get rid of those five lines. Uh, right. 
and as far as resources are concerned our pi image is now not coming from an external URI it's going to come from this artifact uh, so I want to get that uh, Okay, so, uh, so this gets our generic artifact, uh, and that's, yep, that's what we want for the resources anyway. And we're going to also get something very similar to the Pi patch tools. Uh, except uh, instead of being pi patch tools, it will be uh, so. Let's take those five lines. And it's not going to be pi patch tools. It's going to be a pi b docker. Okay, uh, and check every hour. Uh, and of course, it's going to be streams one. I be Docker. Okay. Right. That should get us our inputs, and now. We're going to describe the jobs in this pipeline. So we're going to have uh, call it PyB Docker so that we know what it is. Okay. So it will be very similar uh, to this. Uh, anyway, we've got the plan. Okay, and this time without drunk fingers. And the plan is to do a get on uh, the Pi Docker scripts, uh, and that will be a trigger true. Uh, we also want to get the Pi image. Okay. Uh, and the trigger will be true again. Okay, uh, so this artifact is actually going to be our pi image. Cool, All right. Uh, Okay, and now we have a task. Now the task. Oof. Now let me see. Uh, the task has to uh, run up the pi builder image uh, Right, so um, let's call this build docker. Right, 
Okay. Uh, and it doesn't need to be privileged, I don't believe. Config. Uh, platform Linux. Uh, image resource is going to be uh, type registry um, image and we're going to get that from Uh, and it will be the salty vagrant, uh, and it's the PI Pi Builder, and the inputs okay. Now, this is where uh, we need to look at the way we configured that to work. Uh, so uh, did I put in streams? Uh, I did. Okay, so you remember that by default what is this Docker file doing? It's not doing anything, so there's no uh, command to execute here. Other than the one that it inherits from Docker by VM. Okay, so if we go to uh, uh, okay, so this is the entry point, uh, and it's going to try to find. Uh, a thing under the, these volumes, so SD card, file system image. Uh, so in actual fact, instead of calling that Pi image, uh, now what we don't know, uh, well what we do know is that when this runs it's actually going to create this sort of uh, holding pattern isn't it um, for where the inputs are but they're not going to be under SD card even if we call it SD even if we call the input SD card it's not going to be under there uh, so what we're going to have to do is Uh, and the target is just the platform. Well, the target is going to be P1, so we can leave that as the default because uh, we need to do that in order to be able to SSH into it. So that's what's important to us here. Um, and given that we are passing in, so We're going to need to fudge the input so that the file system appears as this SD card, don't we? Okay, so in actual fact, uh, the best way of doing that would be to have uh, the script do all of the munging. So let's say. Uh, mm, Okay, so we're going to need the pi image uh, as an in input. Uh, and we're also going to need the uh, pi docker as an input. Uh, now we could have a third input which would be our 
uh, our sort of standard mechanism. Uh, okay, so there are several ways we could do this. One, we could modify the the pie builder so that its entry actually does any mangling we need, which is actually not a bad idea. Okay, because the issue is this. Okay, we've currently got. Um, okay. Okay, so here's the issue. The issue is, okay, currently our Pi uh, Builder, okay, is expecting uh, SD card uh, file system. Okay, to, to be uh, where it finds the image file, right? But when we're running this Pi Builder in our pipeline, we, we don't have a way of getting this SD slash SD card in there. Okay, what's going to happen is our inputs are going to end up sort of, you know, under slash 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 build something or other slash Pi image. All right, so. Uh, what we can do is we can either change Pi Builder's entry point so that it will take some input, uh, say our file system, okay, and link it into this position. Okay, so this becomes a, a link to that file, uh, and then change onto the entry point from the loop child's build that's one way of doing it and that keeps it all within our pi builder thing but that then makes a pi builder thing uh, which is already fairly specialized for us because it's got the ssh and scp in there mm, okay or uh, we have a third script Okay, that comes in as an input, uh, which does this mapping, and then simply invokes the uh, entry point. Mm. Uh. Mm. Okay. think do we modify the pie builder to be even more specialized or do we create Another container based on Pi Builder, which contains that specialization, which is probably the better way of doing it. Uh, hmm. um, uh, I, I'm, I'm coming down on the side of writing just extending the existing my builder so instead of it being entry point mm, or we just run main and let main do it Because at the moment, uh, hmm. let's do it this way. Uh, let's do, okay, let's do uh, the output's going to, oh no, hmm. okay, doesn't really matter. Okay, and when we do our run, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to run uh, 
Uh, and we're going to run uh, my docker slash um, let's call it install and we're going to run it as user pi I suppose we could run it as user root. Problem is that no, 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 no. We want to run it as root because it's root within the container, not root within the pi image. Okay, so and, and that's an important point. Um, all of these mappings are um, are within. Uh, the container, yes, okay, no, that's correct. Okay, so we run install. Uh, we don't really need any args, do we? Because it's going to be standardized. Uh, so, so, uh, what we've got is we've got that provisioner okay so we've got the main provisioner that's the one that's going to be scp'd up into pi but we've got this install script which is going to be run inside the container mm -hmm. Now we're getting somewhere. So, uh, this install script will uh, do a number of preparatory, well, do one very important preparatory thing. Okay, uh, so yeah, so what this install has to do is it first has to create the link, uh, and it has to link. to link dollar one to uh, slash SD card slash file system dot image uh, then it has to call entry point, although I suppose you could just exec straight onto it, couldn't it? Uh, uh, now then, does he call it entry point shell or entry point? Entry point. SH and we don't need to provide any arguments. Right, that's it, that's all we need to do. Uh, now the problem with doing that as an exec 
is that that's going to chain it on. Mm -hmm. That's no good. Because what we want to do, in fact, is run that in the background. Uh, And then we want to wait for the SSH to become available, don't we? Uh, in actual fact, we don't really need to do all of this other nonsense, do we? We can steal. We can steal all this code because this is the only bit that we give a damn about. Yeah, the rest of it is over as far as we're concerned. Let's do that. Okay, so actually, and that would also avoid having to do that. Oh, liking this I am. Uh, this could actually become our entry point. Uh, we would still need to get the inputs in there. <clears throat> but basically, what we would be able to do is just define a, uh, Find a function called start start pi uh, uh, which will actually Um, uh, I? Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, if we are uh, they using exec here, so we probably can't just use this raw. Uh, we can't use this raw. Because it's going to do an exec, which essentially will end this script. But um, so can I, run? I mean, I could just run it as a, in a shell, couldn't I? Uh, I'll can, I can run it in a, in a separate shell. Uh, the reason for all of this is I, I need to run it in a separate shell. All right? So exec won't cut the mustard, but we can run it in a different shell. Okay, so in, in essence what I want to do is 
run Queemu in a separate shell. Okay, uh, and then wait, wait for SSH to become available. When it does become available, I then want to SCP for the provisioners. Okay, to the pi, and then this is run on the pi the Provision is main, which we should then build it out. Right. Uh, the other thing I want to do is uh, copy the input image. To the output, uh, and then work on output and so forth. Okay, so uh, so there are a couple of issues there. So this first is running, so the, the emulator will become available, I assume, on 127.0.0.1. On mm, so, mm, somebody's bound to have solved this before. Uh, wait for this is... Yeah, okay, that's fine. If we've got if we've got Ansible, we can do it in Pi. Ooh. In Python, I suppose. Mm, that would mean. That would mean working in Python a bit, which is not tragic. Uh, although it seems to install the SSH wait commands, which is, oh, that's okay. Okay. So we could actually install the SSH wait as part of the base build. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, which would then allow me to run up Mm -hmm. I can run the emulator, push it to the background, uh, which would mean that when this script exited, it should also kill the emulator. Uh, which may not be one. Uh, I may I may want to do things a bit more gracefully than that. Uh, 
Mm. This is starting to look like something. It looks to me like I want to write entry point and put it into Pi Builder, and the entry point wants to look like this install, uh, so that when the Pi Build is actually built, this is what gets run. Because we don't need most of the stuff which is in the original entry point. Uh, and this will just overwrite it. There's something to be said for that. That's a neater solution. It would mean I wouldn't need a run command if I standardize this as an approach. So uh, the tasks uh, the run command is required. Uh, Uh, ah, okay. Well, we're, we're kind of stuck, then, aren't we? Because we, we're going to have to provide this path. Oh, so I, oh no, 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 so I can actually provide it as an absolute, so I can, wow, um, but it's mandatory, okay, it can still be basically an entry point, we'll, we'll, we'll stick to call it an install, it's going to be standardized, um, so I just want to run Queemu in the background uh, M -M 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 -M. okay so the we probably want SSH weight installed to make life easy uh, and then this mm. yeah i think that makes sense doesn't it if we do so it's going to boot this but instead of doing it with exec it's literally just going to run it as a command and run it in the background which will keep it attached to this parent process. Uh, okay, so that, 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 that'll put it in the background. Uh, 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 we'll worry about all the variables in a minute. Uh, so we don't need to do that because we we know where it's going to be. Okay, so there's that. Uh, then the wait for SSH becomes a call to SSH wait, which we will install. 
Uh, we'll have to work out how long we're willing to wait for. Um, then the rest of it, SCCP is fine, SSH is also fine as long as it doesn't as long as it doesn't quit before the end of the script and then here we just do uh, oops, uh, uh, shut down pi we'll do it gracefully by basically sending a shutdown command from the uh, through ssh and then once the so now here uh, we have to then wait for queen u to end. Okay, so we need we need the process ID for this emulator task. Okay. Uh, uh, let's get pid of mm. Okay, so dollar exclamation mark. Simple enough. Okay, so we do that, and then we do, and we say, uh, mu pid equal dollar exclamation mark. We'll deal with that in a minute. Okay. Uh, so we don't want to kill it. What we do want to do is uh, uh, and Yeah, well, uh, so we use minus p. Uh, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. Looks like what we're looking for. So basically, uh, this last bit. Okay, uh, so we can write a function. Wait. Um, new end. Okay. And uh, this is just going to do um, while uh, PSP dollar bid. Don't really need all of this, of course. Um, uh, uh, to okay. Uh, so we do do that, and we sleep for let's say five seconds.
Um, now we're going to set a limit on this as well. Uh, da, 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 da. Now then, the other test is... Uh, 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 let's call this the weight count is less than... Okay, so set the I was going to say 12. Wait a minute, red close now. Uh, yeah, that can be like that. It's not my fault. Uh, okay, so we don't need that line in there. What we can do though uh, is we can say I suppose if Queen Pid doesn't exist What happens if uh shits and giggles that's gonna yes minus P Okay. 
Right. Which makes sense. What were they trying to get out with? Uh, all I'm really interested in so what Okay, I'm going to admit, I don't understand that. Redirect. Uh, I don't understand that redirect. What I want to do then. I mean, obviously it's a bad file descriptor. It's got probably not one or error or whatever. Mm. It looks like they're trying to redirect it to standard input. Uh, that should be fine, I suppose, in a script. But why would you need it? Uh, if you did this, blah, 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 blah. Mm. That reader is it? Mm. Other shell. Mm. Uh,
I mean, that's why I would assume it was done normally. That's the closest thing we've got. The problem is, when we go out to dead level, I'm always going to get nothing, aren't I? Maybe what I'm looking for. Mm, maybe that's maybe it's the equivalent of a dev null. Uh, I mean, that certainly makes sense because we don't we don't need the output. So, uh, mm, redirect it to. Uh, okay, uh, and the weight count is less than the weight limit, and then we sleep for five seconds, and then we say weight count uh, I think we can probably do this just by doing. plus equals one again mm. <laughs> so we can do hmm, so we can use post and ah, there you go. 
Nice. So we're done. Uh, right, okay, so uh, as far as the SSS point is concerned, really ought to add that to the image itself. So, uh, let's do that. Uh, Where am I? Uh, so if we do uh, uh, So it's not really a developer tool, uh, and it's not really a patch tool. Really, that we want to add it to, isn't it? Uh, so, I'm doing the app get install, blah blah blah, and I suppose. This is where I discover that pip's not installed. Uh, Debian Buster Slim. Uh, I suppose the quickest way of checking. afraid of that. That Python is not installed.
That is adding quite a bit of weight, isn't it, for something so relatively simple. Oh, seems to work. Uh, it just seems an awful lot. It's a bit of an
Yeah, check it from inside. Mm. You should be able to check it from the outside. Should we have to just check if the port's there? Uh, Queenview is mapping it to that, was it 5022 port? So, surely all I need to do is have a loop periodically check to see whether that port is available. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to use Telnet. Uh, I checked it from inside. Uh, Really? That doesn't seem right. That just seems wrong, doesn't it? Cool YouTube. Mm. Okay, that's for the timeout. Uh, what's this black magic fuckery? Because I'm not getting any dev TCP. Remember, we're in a container. Mm -hmm. Container we are in. And that may explain the limited uh, in Mm hmm. Okay. Okay, let's try. Uh, where are we? Um, salty Vagrant PI Builder. Uh, understandable. Uh, 
Okay, so Mm, ah. I don't want to install all of the Python stuff just to get one SSH weight. There's got to be an easy way. And the obvious way is just to keep polling and testing port 3022 or 5022, whatever it is I'm up to. Uh, I don't think less is installed on there, is it? Oh, it is. All right. um, so, running the emulator uh, uh, and just keep testing local port 5022. See if it's live would be one way of doing it. Uh, <coughs> well, that means that this uh, that means it's a port IO two two doesn't necessarily mean there's anything connected to point five oh two two. It's possible that the Guimu emulator creates a port five oh two two on the local host as soon as it starts. I mean the SSH is actually there. So you would then need to keep testing that. Let's, uh, let's give it a uh, hmm, problem now is I don't know where where am I? Hello. All right. Mm. Uh, bleh. Uh, is that a patched file system image, or is it just a? And does it really matter? Not for the purposes of this exercise, so I need to do the docker run map our system mm.
tiny ball. Uh, right, so four, five, six. There's our queen system running. Surprising. Is there a way for us to just Yeah, I know. Okay, so we can check for a listening port. Okay, I don't suppose net stats installed. It is. Okay, so we can see 502 is listening, so I suppose that's something. Uh, what I want to know Uh, is this on? No. Well, I suppose that's another way of doing it. Uh, probably not as helpful. Okay. LSOF minus NP minus I TCP uh, and it was five O two two and we want to be um TCP listen. Well that's not helpful, is it? Oh, 
no, I was just getting the output completely different. Net stats the globes used I've got. I mean the screen is too grip for five oh two two. The problem is Is there a way for me to just probe? Ugh. Uh, Well, okay, so uh, this where we're saying wait for the SSH to become available, I suppose becomes. Same way, don't we? We could install timeout to make it a bit more. But, ah, this will do. Well, right, so what we're looking for here is um, we want it to be while not. I can't, uh, what happens if I do? Oh, see, this is where my bash scripting skills get challenged. Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's a compound command. Do I need to run it as a subshell? Hmm. In actual fact, we're checking. Yeah, in actual fact, we can do it with because uh, it's minus. If this is empty, then we've got a problem. What happens? Uh, is that true? Uh, uh, if I do this stat last one right now the problem is it's got all of those title blocks, doesn't it? So if I do grep Five oh two two, which I know is going to return nothing. Cool. 
So if that's empty, we know it hasn't started yet. Seems usual. Uh, what is it? Mm. Okay, let's start. So while well, that's empty, and uh, the weight count is less than give the same weight in it, then we do sleep for five seconds and then. Increment uh, Now the problem is Both of these weights currently assume that sooner or later uh, we, oh, within the weight count limit we're going to actually get what we want. That's not necessarily true, is it, mate? So we need to we need to polish those a bit and give them an, an error outcome, uh, so that uh, when we Really? SSH to become available becomes wait for SSH shut down by gracefully becomes uh, wait on menu end. It becomes uh, SSH. We need to run run the command. So so what we've done it. Uh, so we do SSH run, and it will be shut down. Uh, actually, it will be shut down minus H. Now and then it'll be wait for wait on premium end. So we need a function. Use SSH run. Okay, and the command or equal whatever comes in 
And yes, yes, I know. Uh, right, so now we want to do this is H. Minus what? Five two two. Uh, right at twenty seven dot zero dot zero dot one. And the command. Uh, File. Yeah, just follow on. So, uh, so quote dollar. Oh my, it's command. So that becomes this is H. Run uh, now. Do we run? Do we run the whole thing? So we do. We might as well. So slash temp slash provision uh, slash main. Uh, and the SCP becomes. SCP quotes uh, and we want to copy uh, and it will be uh, and it will be the Provision scripts, which will equal to one I guess. Okay, and this will be copy provision uh, scripts. Mm. I suppose it wants to be recursive. Oh, it's going to be copied up to mm. whatever the Queen New script. Our machine is so we need to figure out how to identify that. Although, uh, do we really? Because we need just pi at one uh, car slash temp. Uh, and in actual fact, if we just copy the directory like that. Uh, across to the destination, which is always going to be a standard anyway. Uh, so all we really need is the directory to copy it to. Oh, 
checking any error conditions uh, so it's not very graceful but probably work okay thing we want to do is this is a run just to be on the safe side form says one should use the long form in scripts so of course I'm assuming that uh, drop there honors that where it's easier just to look isn't it okay uh, let's go to okay uh, so we've got a uh, capital p for port i for identity user blah 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 blah, blah. file and I'm going to guess lowercase r. Okay. So uh, it's copy capital P. Uh, recursively, everything from the source over to the destination source is everything within that provision script I 
and we should just get away with that, shouldn't it? But the problem is you don't know what the provision script is going to be and you don't want to mess about getting the last one. Ah, no, no, no. Let's just do it that way. Uh, and we copy it over to provisioners. And that means then we can just do a recursive two mod to make sure that everything in provisioners uh, is set to executable. And then we run provisioners main. Okay. Okay, so what we've got Come on. Come on. Right, so uh, okay, so our script's shaping up reasonably well. We've not done much in terms of checking the error conditions or making sure that we've detected bad paths but we're getting there uh, the one thing we do need to tidy up is all of this stuff here uh, and to be honest i'm tempted to just chain out to uh, the entry point that said there are some problems with doing that, and that is getting the proper PID. Uh, although, whatever's returned from... Nah, come on, let's just, let's just do this. Now, we don't really need to uh, know all of this because... Uh, the emulator, every, everything's going to be standard for us, isn't it? So, it's going to be, oops, uh, it's go, oh, come on. It's going to be standard. Uh, we could change, uh, oops. Be queen system arm. Is it arm or arm sixty four? It's arm. Cool. Uh, queen system arm. Uh, the machine. It's going to be versatile PB. This is where we're going to run into difficulties. Is when they update this stuff, isn't it? Hmm. Oh, come on, let's do this properly. Oops. Uh, okay, so. Uh, we don't need any of this, do we? Uh, let's do delete down what, 14 lines. Uh, and all this is going to do is call out to entry point shell. The only difference is we're going to run it in the background. 
And we are going to take whatever the pit is. The Queen U pit will equal whatever's return. Okay. Which will actually of course be the shell. But given that it changed immediately onto the exec. Uh, the exec should replace it. Interesting question. Hmm. Oh, well, we'll soon find out. Uh, what I'm sure, what I'm not sure of is that the because uh, the entry point shell will run. So the the shell will run and it will execute the script. But the exec will then chain on the queen view. Okay, but all of that will be running in the background. So the question is what happens to the process ID under those circumstances? Do I get the process ID of queen view or do I get the process ID of the shell? Uh, does it replace it? Uh, Clicking from yes. Uh, so it is the current process image with a new process image, so it should have the same pit, I guess. Uh, how do I get the bid of a just like process? Exec system call. Yes. Mm -hmm. What I want to know, and this one might answer the question. Uh, Using full shell pairing process produces a shell process. Yep, fine. Source just sources the content of the script. Current process exit. When you run the script with exit, it's the same as source. When the script executes within the current process, but the remainder of the original code within the process is terminated. Well, that's not really true, is it? It's a bit more than that. Yeah, that's a bit of a misleading description. Mm -hmm. The virtual record is in the same shell as the pattern script we're using. After it works a new. New script contents after exit the parent is not going to get wrong. Yeah, but that's not really what's happening, is it? I don't I don't think that's really what happens. 
I think. Yeah, I think it actually runs a new shell. But it runs it within the same period. Okay, the exec places the current process in front of the new process. It loads the program into the current process space and runs it from the entry point, which again suggests that it will have the same PID, it's just we've replaced the process. Uh, well, these are very unhelpful, I think. Yeah, I think my understanding is correct. In which case, well, that should be okay. Because uh, although Edge Point Shell will have been created with the process ID, which is running the shell, the exec will run the Queen View and basically just replace it, but the PID will stay the same, so this will be valid even so. Uh, well, we'll find out soon enough. Right, okay, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's do some uh, tidying up with the formatting here. Some way of indicating so uh, these are going to fail if it drops out of this loop. Uh, so if it drops out of here and um, this condition. So if that condition is still true, then we have a problem. So, uh, yeah, so basically if So if that condition is still true, uh, Similarly, if this
I mean, waiting on the Queen New End actually is not the end of the world. If it doesn't finish, we really ought to make it an error, I guess. And we should really make these two separate values, shouldn't we? Um, let's call it QE weight limit. And this one will be the SSH weight limit. Uh, both the same for now. Uh, so how are we doing? Uh, and that's quite old to set those to some value, isn't it? Uh, so. Not especially imaginative. Again, room for improvement. The other problem is that we might find this function is going to so let's, whoops. let's make it clear, otherwise we will run into a problem that we are masking the actual call. Here. So really, I suppose that should be a variable which we discover at the beginning. Um, I mean, by rights, we should do something like this. Uh, um, SCP equal. Uh, and there's no point in making this bash because we're running okay we'll sort of that in a minute in fact a lot of this script is going to have to be rewritten Because I've assumed that it's all going to be running in Bash, and it ain't. It's going to be running in the context of hmm. yes, that could be a problem. Hmm. Uh, most of this is going to be complete nonsense. Uh, 
because this is not running Bash. I don't think for mm. example we can do things like this everything uh, the tests and the calculation hmm. uh, okay so y equals one echo dollar y Plus plus not found right. Uh, so uh, plus equals one. No. Okay. About. Just doesn't do anything. So I have to assume these calculations are pointless. Okay, so how do I do calculations? If I can't use the double brackets, So this is is it ash cares about bash we know we can do it in bash Thank <laughs> you. 
Post and the output. Okay. So does that mean then that dev null? Oh, dev null exists. So we, yeah, we can carry on with that. Complex commands, pipeline, compound commands, background command is the same. Flow of control. Lists, functions, local, social parameters, arithmetic expressions. Ah, okay, so you've got a dollar in front of them. Okay, so. Right, so that seems to have solved that problem, kind of. Except... Uh, does that mean we have to do y equals... Oops. y equals... So we have to do it slightly differently. Uh, a function seems to work okay. Sticking stuff in the background seems to be the same. Uh, most of the parameter expressions are the same. What was it I just spotted? I spotted something out of the corner of my beady little eye. Uh, and I thought to myself, that's going to cause a problem. We on the whole, it doesn't look too bad, does it? Uh, so we, we basically we have to do uh, we have to change a few things. He's he's read only a thing. Bracket test, didn't we?
Okay, so not standard but it works in this context so we'll leave it in because uh, it's only designed to work in this context same with local Most of this stuff we're going to end up ignoring. Okay, we're closing in on it. Uh, oh. <clears throat> sucks having just edited those two. That is, I think it's clearer. Mm -hmm. I think it's clearer the way it is, don't you? Uh, let's leave that in. Local, local, local. Right, okay. Mm-hmm. 
and because I have no particular desire to go through and Is that masking something else? Okay, I think that's okay as it is. Uh, the shell check's failing because I'm using non-standard things like function and local. Uh, and local is not standard to ash, uh, but it it is implemented. Uh, so ash shell interpreter uh, command. Grouping counts to uh, functions. Yeah, you see, where would you get his local to a function using the local command? Right, so we can use local. Uh, function, however, is redundant. And the double Conditional is not defined. Uh... Mm -hmm. The problem is it, it's being recognised, but is it just the condition that's being recognised? This the building commands. Oh, in addition to these, there are several other commands maybe built in for efficiency. But only test. Does that mean I need to get rid of all the double? And if I do, have any effect okay okay so Get rid of
I'm leaving the local because uh, and I'm leaving that grip the way it is because it's more idiomatic and functions not doing any harm uh, and treat that much the same as local because it may not be standard but it, it works and it's clearer in my mind uh, Right. Uh, is that all I need to install? I thought. Uh, did I put a parameter in? Yes, I did. So the parameter that I need to pass into the script. Okay, so that should do the trick, he said somewhat optimistically. So by convention then, uh, oh, did, did we finish? Yeah, we did because we, we just used the one that was there. Mm. Right. Oh, did we uh, link in? Ah, so after all of that, we didn't link in the file, did we? So we need to do that. Uh, right. How are we doing? Oh, it's time for your dinner. Okay, well, we've made some good progress. Uh, it all needs testing, of course. Uh, and I do need to link in the image file. Uh, so if I just say let's say file system and we'll equal dollar two and here install so here we need to do a link between SD card. Well, uh, it'll actually be file system, which can be called anything we like, which is actually a good thing. And SD card file system dot image. Uh, 
So we can do that, and then down here uh, we pass in as our second argument, and it will be the pi image slash oops, slash file system image. Nice. Yeah, I like that. I like that because it means if we ever change the way the pie images are handled, we don't have to worry about what it's called. Because inside here, the link will remap it. Okay. Mm, I mean, there's lots of stuff we could do. Uh, for example, testing to make sure that the file system actually exists and like kind of stuff. But, uh, I think that'll do. Right, let's call it a day, uh, and we'll come back tomorrow and do the testing. Well, tomorrow or Monday.